to another episode on dentistry and more. Today we will be doing conservative dentistry question paper discussion part three. I'm Dr. Megha Rao and today we will be talking about dentinal hypersensitivity. We'll be discussing the questions, how to answer it, and I will be going through the theory of the topic as well. So this can come as long essays, short essays, and short answers. Long essays can be define hypersensitivity, explain the theories of hypersensitivity and management. Short essays can be theories of hypersensitivity and short answers can be dentin hypersensitivity. So the contents of this presentation are in the same format that I would recommend that you answer your question paper in. And these are the headings under which you will have to write your answer. This kind of gives the examiner a much better uh, picture as to you and your understanding and how clear your understanding of the subject is. Dentin hypersensitivity, dentinal hypersensitivity and dentin sensitivity are all the same thing. This is one of the most common complaints that patients come to us with after pain. And so as clinicians, it is important for us to be able to differentiate between pain and sensitivity. The International Workshop on Dentin Hypersensitivity in 1983 defined dentin hypersensitivity as, a char as characterized by short, sharp pain arising from exposed dentin in response to stimuli, typically thermal, evaporative, tactile, osmotic, or chemical and which cannot be ascribed to any other form of dental defect or pathology. This definition is of extreme importance because our diagnosis and treatment is based on this definition. The prevalence of dentin hypersensitivity ranges between 8 to 35 percent depending on the population with a mean age range of 20 to 50 which peaks between 30 to 40. Now, the reason why it peaks between 30 to 40 is because the dentin and the enamel thickness prior to 30 is significantly high. But after 30, that's when all the, uh, the dentin starts to, the enamel starts to wear out and the dentin starts to get exposed. And what happens after 40 is the secondary dentin deposition towards the pulp chamber and the reparative dentin starts to form which means the thickness of the dentin again increases as a compensatory and protective mechanism. It's usually seen more in females than in males, and the teeth that are involved are usually canines followed by premolars, incisors, and molars. And this is mainly attributed to the thickness of the dentin in these teeth, especially around the cervical region. Now, the canines are the cornerstones of the dental arch, so what happens is most of the patients come to us with sensitivity uh, because of the wrong brushing technique. So the canines, since they are at the corner, they tend to get abraded more than the premolars, incisors, and molars. So that is why they are at the highest. And then that is followed by premolars, incisors, and lastly, molars. Now the etiology of dentin hypersensitivity can be mainly divided into two things. One, enamel loss, or two, cemental loss. And both of these result in one thing, and that is exposure of the dentin. So enamel loss can happen due to occlusal wear, toothbrush abrasion, dietary erosion, abfraction, parafunctional habits, and many more. The cemental loss mainly occurs due to gingival recession and periodontal disease, and can also occur due to iatrogenic reasons after root planing or periodontal surgery. There are two types, there are two phases in uh, the progression of this disease. The first is lesion localization, where there's initial loss of dentin, and then there is lesion initiation, where there is removal of cementum or the smear layer. Coming to the most important aspect in this topic, that is the theories of hypersensitivity. There have been three theories that have been proposed to explain the mechanism or why hypersensitivity occurs, of which two have been disapproved and only one is accepted today. The direct innervation theory, as the name suggests, refers to nerve fibers. This theory stated that 
nerve fibers are present within the tubules. And these nerve fibers get stimulated on exposure to the stimulus and it activates the pain pathway, nerve, spinal cord, and the thalamus, where the sensitivity is perceived in the, as in the nociceptor centers. But this was disapproved because Histology showed that nerve fibers are present only in the pre-dentin and the inner dentinal zones, and these do not innervate the entire dentinal tubules. The nerves were also absent in root dentin, and a lot of dentinal sensitivity that we see occurs in the roots. Also, when pain-inducing substances like potassium chloride, acetylcholine, and histamine were applied to the dentin, they failed to elect a, per a, a painful response. Whereas this, if you normally apply on any nerve, it elects a lot of pain. So this clearly stated that the nerve fibers are actually not present all the way up to the end in the dentinal tubules. And that is why the direct innovation theory was disproved. Coming to our next theory, which is the odontoblast deformation theory. Odontoblasts or their processes are damaged when external stimuli are applied to expose dentin. And this results in the conduction of impulses to the nerve endings that are present in the pre-dentin and the pulp, which is perceived in the thalamus as sensitivity. But this theory was also disapproved because it said that the odontoblastic processes did not extend all the way up to the end of the dentinal tubules close to the DEJ. But all the stimuli that were applied are usually in that region. The odontoblastic membrane potential is also too low to permit transduction of such a great range. There was no demonstrable neurotransmitters like acetylcholine in the dentinal tubules. And that is why this theory was disproved. And that brings us to the most widely accepted theory, which is the hydrodynamic theory. This theory, as the name suggests, hydrodynamic, that means water or fluid and the dynamics of that fluid, that is what this theory spoke about. This was first introduced by Brandstorm M, and it stated that the stimulus through tactile, chemical, thermal, or osmotic stimuli results in rapid movement of the fluid in the dentinal tubules, either towards or away from the pulp. What did this do? This resulted in either direct or indirect stimulation of the A delta fibers. Now, dentin sensitivity, as we all know, is a sharp shooting pain. This quick pain or sharp shooting pain, the speed of the pain and the intensity of pain all points to A delta fibers over C fibers. And Brandstorm said that this direct stimulation of the A delta fibers or the indirect stimulation that occurs due to the odontoblastic cell body displacement resulted in sensitivity. And that is why this is the most widely accepted theory. Now to support this, a lot of studies had been conducted. Scanning electron microscope and dye penetration tests have suggested that the patency of these dentinal tubules are present only in teeth with hypersensitivity. And that proves hydrodynamic theory. The clinical features of dentin hypersensitivity uh, are short, sharp pain in response to either heat, cold, tactile stimuli, sweet or sour food. And the most important thing is that these symptoms get relieved upon the removal of the stimulus. The diagnosis is through appropriate case history and clinical examination, and most importantly, to rule out any sort of pulpal and periapical pathology. Differential diagnosis includes fractured restorations, fractured enamel exposing dentin, dental caries, post-restoration sensitivity, cracked tooth syndrome, and bleaching sensitivity. Let's look at the management. Management is mainly done through two things. One, desensitization by occluding the dentinal tubules, or two, desensitizing by blocking the pulpal sensory nerves. So there are many ways in which we can occlude the dentinal tubules. The first occurs naturally. That is a protective mechanism called formation of smear layer of, over the exposed dentin. Now, as restorative dentists, this is actually a pain for us, but um, it is actually a protective mechanism that helps 
occlude the dentinal tubules and thereby prevent sensitivity. The other way is by using topical agents to occlude the exposed dentinal tubules. And the agents that can be used are calcium hydroxide paste, calcium phosphate paste, silver nitrate, strontium chloride, fluorides, potassium oxalate, varnishes, and most importantly, dentin adhesives. So the daily uh, agents that we use, like dentin bonding agents, can play a very, very important role in management of dentin hypersensitivity. But of course, they are not permanent solutions. So for permanent solutions, the only option is placement of restorations. Now, depending on where the lesion is, if it is in an aesthetic zone, usually we don't do uh, glass cement uh, restorations, but we'd rather do composite resin restorations. But if it is not in the aesthetic zone, then the recommended material of choice is glass cement. The other most advanced technology that is used in the um, management of dentin hypersensitivity is the use of lasers. Lasers used are, car are carbon dioxide laser, NB YAG, erbium YAG, and helium neon laser. Now, desensitization can also be done by blocking pulpal sensory nerves. And the only agent that we have today to do this is potassium nitrate toothpastes. These potassium nitrate toothpastes are actually extensively used in bleaching cases because uh, a very common uh, complication after bleaching is the post-op sensitivity that we face. So what dentists usually do is they use this potassium nitrate toothpaste prior to the commencement of bleaching procedures and during the process and after the process, thereby preventing or reducing the sensitivity that occurs to bleaching. Um, but this can also be used for normal dentin hypersensitivity as well. And the mechanism of action is basically this potassium nitrate penetrates through the dentinal tubules, enters the pulp space, and thereby blocks the pulpal sensory nerve endings and prevents that stimulus from going through. So that brings us to the end of this topic. The references that I have used are The Art and Science of Operative Dentistry, 7th edition by Sturdivant. Operative Dentistry by Ramya Raghu, and I believe that this chapter has been very well written in this uh, in this textbook. Also, Operative Dentistry by Vimal Sikri, and uh, a few materials and desensitizing agents I had got from Mahalakshmi, which uh, is a textbook on the material sciences in dentistry. Uh, so, it is important that after watching this video, you must go through any of these textbooks once, and that helps, you know, kind of uh, consolidate what we have discussed today. I hope this video helped you and um, while answering a question on dentin hypersensitivity, the most important thing is to write your answer under these headings and this really gives clarity to the, to the examiner and to you when you're writing your answer and you will make sure that you won't miss any of your points while writing the answer. So that was dentistry and more. Stay tuned for more videos. This is Dr. Meghwadao. Thank you.